Friday the 26th of April and I want to make a travel video. It's been a long time so I'm going to start it tonight. Our plan is to move up to Bay Springs Marina. Bay Springs Marina tomorrow. Period. It's a slight glitch. I don't know how this will work. Slide over a little bit. So. There's a, there's a, two, two, a couple moving a boat, and uh, they asked Grumpy where Bay Springs was. You only have two choices, turn right or turn left. So I got some more information on him, and he sort of indicated that it'd be nice if I helped them out there. They're not boaters. Buying this boat for uh, to charter rent, like like probably an Airbnb. Airbnb kind of thing. Kind of thing. Yeah. I also found out from my friend here in the Marina Lou, boat ha hasn't been moved in 20 years. <laughs> it's a houseboat type boat with a single screw. It, it just is situation waiting for a disaster. We haven't met them yet, but I'll try to uh, verify this as it happens. So we're pretty excited. Well, it'll feel good to move again. We've uh, we left the house three and a half weeks ago, so until we drove down here, and we've been literally working on the boat to some degree almost every day, except for maybe those four days that it rained, either inside or outside, but. I think she's, well, there'll be more stuff once we get down to Kingfisher, but she's, she's ready to, we're ready to move, she's ready to move, be a good shakedown cruise, catch up with Tracy. I, I did have AI, I mean, I installed AIS, by yeah. the way, it took three days of custom and fuming, and, yeah. but I got it, and uh, yeah. the whole thing probably cost me a thousand bucks, with the unit I bought, the special antenna, and so on. Some people will say you don't need it with radar, but we found out you don't need it necessarily if you're traveling in a group. But if you're one boat out on the river and a huge tug's bearing down on you. A lot of people said it was plug and play. I think it was a little bit more than plug and play. It, it was plug and play, only there was nine <laughs> plugs. That all had to go from the unit to, and it was very tight space. So anyway, that's today's cheers, cheers. Friday night on the flybridge yes. for a change. Mm -hmm. Hold that. Okay, it's about quarter seven Saturday morning. I'm gonna walk up, check things. See if the couple from Texas, what they're thinking. So that was Charlie. I don't think he slept at all. Drove straight through from Texas knows he has to get fuel, but he's not sure how to do that. So, it's the start of our day. So this is the last look at the quote unquote facilities and laundry. There's our friend, Lou, who's helped us out quite a bit. Pima, yeah, there were several people that uh, are looking at the lift that was in Pima. Yeah, we hung out with them uh, a couple of weekends ago. We rode from Pima uh, down to uh, Moody Gardens. Uh, mm -hmm. That was pretty cool. I know that that was cool. 
Okay, we're leaving, going out into the channel, and waiting for our companion boat. Okay, so we're coming up on a tug. His name is Crimson White. He is uh, generously allowing us to get by on his one, and we will get through the locks first. So it's a great break. Hopefully, uh, our buddy behind us can also do it. Okay, this is the John Rankin lock. Our first lock in six months. Going to pull into uh, on the port side, get tied up, and uh, hopefully my buddy boat back there can manage it. Feels pretty calm. I think he'll be alright. At the beginning of this video, uh, we were still at Midway. Midway, and I said we were leaving. The next day and then I, I did film we left the next morning um, right now we're sitting at Bay Springs Marina Bay Springs Marina I'll tell you we love this marina and the people that run it yeah. uh, we were here on our last night last year and it's yeah it's so so nice. you'll see some drone footage uh, I've become a droneaholic but I want to tell you a story as respectfully as we can without mentioning any names. I was approached at Midway, semi-approached like, well, where are you guys going? And we said, we're going up to Grand Harbor. Grand Harbor. And Grumpy, uh, the dock master. So well, I have a boat that's going up there too, but unfortunately they don't have any boating experience. I guess the no boating experience sort of suckered me in a little bit, even though that was might have been the understatement of the year, you think? I bet you can. So anyway, I said, well, they can follow us up. But I made it clear, I have a captain's license, and I said, I, I'm, this is not my responsibility. All I'm doing is, is leading, the leading the way. I, have, I want absolutely no responsibility. Uh, and that's the way it worked out. So why don't you talk about the people without mentioning mm -hmm. any names? Yeah, it was a nice couple. They were from uh, Louisiana. Well, and, very uh, bayou. Yeah, and they were buying this houseboat um, that hadn't been run for seven or eight years, and they were gonna. They needed to get it up to Aqua Yachts to get it trucked down to the bayou. They're using it as an Airbnb. So we met them the next morning, and as the story unfolded, they had driven all night from Texas. Texas. They were nice people, and mm -hmm. that's why I want to be careful how I, how I. Mm -hmm. Uh, turns out the boat was, it, it would be fine as long as it, you don't put it in any water or anything. <laughs> in the bayou, it's probably only two inches deep, so they could probably do that. But just briefly, they had no garments. No life jackets. No life jackets. We gave them two new life jackets. Mm -hmm. Didn't know if the radios worked. Had never been on the boat before. Mm -hmm. Had a four cylinder gas engine that hadn't been run in six or eight years. Mm -hmm. They don't have an, no idea if there was fuel in the tanks. And the fuel would have been old. They couldn't begin to drive the boat. No fenders, no... What, you had never it. locked. Had never locked, had never driven a boat like this. Now, most of you people watch enough uh, YouTube videos to know that locking can be challenging. This would be a terrible boat to lock because, like, picture a houseboat. It had a front and a back, but no access on the sides. So at this point, uh, I'm feeling committed, and I'm also feeling sort of pitying them. 
They've been up all night. They're literally scared to death. So we took the boat over, fueled it up, sort of ran and cut out, and sort of ran some more. There was no question, absolutely no question, it was going to be a wet shit show. <laughs> and it was a royal shit show. So anyway, I, I want to keep this moving. We uh, got him out. Of, oh, so Lorraine called the lock master up. It's one lock, mm -hmm. two miles up, and and had a nice conversation with him. Tommy. Tommy. Look at Tommy. <laughs> uh, we sort of told him the situation. Told him when we'd be there, and and this time of year he 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 agreed to sort of help. You know, we said these people have never locked. We can lock most of the time, but we certainly can't lock two boats. There's no question, again, that there should have been somebody on that boat, a third person. Although, a paid captain would not have touched it. You couldn't... They would have wanted the, engines, the and, engine to be going over, and it's a little bit of maintenance. And a little bit of, of electronics, mm -hmm. and a little bit of this, and a little bit of that. So anyway, mm -hmm. so we head out about 9 o'clock, and I see, and they're following me, and you'll see this. I didn't film a lot of it. Uh, we got them through the first lock. Let's just say it, it was a success. Yeah, and they, they did pretty well. They I did thought pretty well. Probably better than we did. <laughs> Halfway through the next lock, about four miles up mm -hmm. the river, they were sort of falling back, and, mm -hmm. and you couldn't really communicate with them except for cell phones because mm -hmm. they had a radio, but he, he couldn't quite. If I was on 14, he was on 16. If I was on. 16 he was on 68 it was just uh so we called him and uh, his girlfriend who was charming mm -hmm. she called me mr randy i said you guys all right you know you're laying back she said well the engine just totally shut down nobody was surprised mm -hmm. so i said well, we'll come back and talk to you now grumpy had made it crystal clear and I, and I had to insist it. He said if something happens they are to call me. Mm -hmm. He said it's, it, it should not affect your trip and, and that's the way I felt about it. So we went back and we talked to her on the back deck and they had on their two brand new life jackets that we gave them and uh, gave, helped them, gave them some phone numbers to call and, and I just basically said you cannot you will never get this boat up there. Yeah, you want to get it towed up to Aqua Yachts, then then it was there, and they could be put on the truck Monday. Yeah, you had to get it towed. Yeah. You, you just... Yeah. I pretty, should have said that. Pretty expensive tow, though, especially in, if you don't have Boat US. In the very beginning, I think I should... Not that it had anything to do with me, but as a captain, mm -hmm. I should have said, you cannot take this boat up the river. Mm -hmm. Oh, to add insult to injury, we had about 25 mile an hour winds that day. Mm -hmm. So anyway... That's pretty much where I'm going to stop. Uh, we don't know the rest of the story yet. It still may not have unfolded, but apparently they they did get in touch with somehow Boat US, mm -hmm. and they were being towed today. I don't yeah. know what that meant about yesterday, yeah. but we'll find out uh, tomorrow what was going Megan, on. Megan, who runs this marina, got a call from Boat mm -hmm. US. They wanted to come in here. Yeah. I think that would be a mistake. I think they have to take them wherever. The end result is, yeah. and uh, the only other thing to say about this, we were both extremely stressed. Mm -hmm. I felt really guilty. I I don't know what more I could have done. I couldn't tow a boat through a lock. I don't even think I could do it legally. Yeah, it's I, just not wise. I um, just they felt had no way to power. I just, just I think I just felt helpless mm -hmm. all night. I worried about them. So, I think the lesson is. That in that is, if you want to be a good Samaritan, make sure you know what you're getting into first. Mm -hmm. So you'll see that a little bit of it. I didn't film a lot. I don't even think I got her on film, but she was a sweetheart. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a little concerned because the there was a tow that let us go in front, both of us go in front, which was very nice. We didn't have to wait, but we knew that once we were through the lock, this big tow was was going to be coming through. Well, and they would, don't have. It would have been several hours. But, but you know, we don't know what happened. And, uh, and, and they don't have any maneuverability. At the, God, no. 
neither did this boat. Right, right. right. Uh, the river at this particular point was very, it was, I'd say, one of the most challenging sections of the river we've gone through because you get 10 feet outside the channel, yeah. you're, you're in, well, you might I, be in two feet of water. I ran us aground the last day, uh -huh. but before we got to Midway last year, so because uh, uh, the the buoys were knocked off course and right so yeah, our, it's sketchy our options were, were very few all we could do is advise them get mm -hmm. this far out of the channel which you can put a put an anchor, put an anchor down, down and uh, if so? you're religious folk pray and uh, but they were they were great people mm -hmm. and he was I'll let you hear a little bit of him on, on tape. Louisiana I boy. <laughs> I think the thickest accent. As a matter of fact, he would have talked perfectly to, to the, the toes. tugs because <laughs> they would have understand each other. But anyway, so I'm going to include, I wanted to include that little blog. Yeah, so, so till the next time and we find out what the rest of the story is, yeah, right? Yeah, if there's more to it, we'll <laughs> let you know. Right, just go down and talk to him. Okay. Just tell him there's not much we can do. Yeah. So our second lock, Montgomery Lock and Dam. I spoke to the lock minister. He's ready for us. We'll probably pull right in to. I don't know why I say to, but anyway. We lost our buddy boat, and I'll explain that somewhere on this video. Okay, we're entering for a port side tie. We have a green light. Okay, we're coming up on Jamie Witten Lock. It's an 84 foot lift. I don't like those. Drift, drop. All right, no, we're going up 84 feet. Oh. This will be our last lock of the, of the day. The next stop will be Bay Springs Marina. As soon as we get through the lock. It's an 84 foot lift. One of the highest on the, this part of the rivers anyway. 